If you really want to know about Jesus, then you'd better follow me. People of Nazareth are suspicious about Jesus. I think he himself said, no prophet is ever accepted in his own town. He was a miracle since the day he was born. Captivating, like a star. I don't know how useful my words will be to you, but hearing them may be better than not hearing them. It goes back about 20 odd years. I had a workshop in Sinai. My wife and I had been married for a few years. I was just beginning to develop my career. Herod had ordered the massacre of all infants. And Joseph the carpenter, who had fled to Egypt with Mary and Jesus, sought shelter in Sinai. Young Jesus was five. Truly amazing child. One day when I was working in my workshop, five-year-old Jesus came in. We'll put these here. We'll put these here. Do you see? Now, we'll put these ones here. For yellow. For yellow. Never put anything in here because it's black. Now, I want to bless these with your hands. Give me your hands. All right, Master Jonah. Come, give me your hands. I need to take the dyed material. The customers are waiting. But I'm about to... All right, all right. Now, Jesus, listen. Don't touch the cloth. Until I return. All right? Let's go, Master. It's getting late. Jesus, don't forget. Don't put anything into the black one. Nothing. All right? I'll be back soon. Young Jesus, you didn't put anything into the dyes, did you? I did. Into which one? That one. This? Yes. Oh, no. Into the black? Yes. Oh no, I'm ruined. What will I tell my customers? I said don't put them in this pot.
It's blue. Blue, green, pink, yellow. Jonah, where are you? That's my wife, Sephora. What's the matter? I've brought you some lunch. Would you like to introduce me to your guest, Master Jonah? Well, actually, I don't know his name yet. Please forgive me. I forgot to introduce myself. I am Judas, from Alexandria. Are you a traveler? Not usually, but my curiosity has brought me here. Curiosity? I was wondering about the son of Mary. Jesus. You're not his enemy? No. I wanted to ascertain the accuracy of the miracles they attribute to him. Jesus' miracles are innumerable. I have wanted to see him again for many long years. You had only seen what I have seen of the son of Mary. You would never have asked such a question. What have you seen? Things you would only ever hope to see from an angel. From the most pure prophet of God. Once in Cairo, I was passing the shop of Master Jonathan, the most famous potter in town, and I saw the son of Mary. The master potter, God bless him, was talking of his art in the most elaborate fashion. He was drawing a picture of a hoopoe. And little Jesus was watching the master work. The shopkeepers in the bazaar said that Jesus' presence increased their sales. People always found some reason to be around or make excuses to play with the little one. They adored little Jesus. It's not easy to make a bird with clay. God created all of us from clay. He made both you and me, and now I play with clay. You play with some. Here, son. Now I'll breathe on it. Breathe on it? <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? So it becomes a bird by God's leave.
Tell me your name, young man. Judas. I am a stranger here. Welcome to the group of strangers. Verily I say unto you, I teach you so you can act upon it and teach it to others too. I don't teach you so you shall become haughty and consider yourself superior. Forgive whoever oppresses you, and greet whoever turns his face away from you. I'm very far from the stony fields of Jerusalem. Why have I come to Mount Olive? Were weeks of wandering not enough for me? I cannot return to Iscariot either. The zealots will find me. If I stay with them either, they'll do me in, or I'll be crucified in Golgotha by the Romans like a dog. But why? The world is so beautiful. Is it not a pity someone like me has no share in it? I'm not stupid. I'm not. I must go somewhere where I can gain a profit. But where? And how? That's it. The Galilean sorcerer. If you want to be among the friends of God, then be kind to whomever does you wrong. Great are the benefits which God has bestowed upon us, wherefore it is necessary that we should serve him with truth of heart. Verily, blessed are they that mourn this earthly life, for they shall be comforted and blessed are the poor who truly hate the delights of the world. For they shall abound in the delights of the kingdom of God. Verily, blessed are they that eat at the table of God. For the angels shall minister unto them. It doesn't matter if he's a prophet or a sorcerer. The high priests and zealots both are afraid of him. They say he receives many alms because he travels a lot. Those around him don't look to be much more than a bunch of shepherds, fishermen, and villagers. Even a pure, pious man needs a clever crook for his dirty jobs. And so each man among you is journeying as a pilgrim. Does the pilgrim encumber himself with palaces and fields 
and other earthly matters upon his way? Assuredly not, but he bears things which are light and prized for their usefulness and convenience upon the road. This should be an example for you. Weigh not down your hearts with earthly desires, saying, Who shall clothe us? Who shall give us food? But behold, the flowers and the trees with the birds which God our Lord clothes. And the omnipotent God who created you is able to nourish you. But I say unto you verily, that whatsoever ye shall give and forsake for the love of God, you will receive it back a hundredfold and life everlasting. Lord, however, I wanted, I wanted to present this to you and your disciples for your coming travels. The prayers of the villagers and myself will be with you. Great man, we have ailing people in the village. If you would allow it of us, we wish to bring them here. You are welcome to stay the night in our house. Our village is not far. What are you waiting for? Call the other villagers. Tell them to bring the sick people. I'll get them right away. Thank you, Master. It's now or never. Let me kiss your feet. No, please, get up. Who are you? Excellency. My name is Iscariot. Judas Iscariot. I worked around the temple for some time. I exchanged coins and I was around the zealots for some time. We fought to save Rome from Palestine. No. I mean Palestine from Rome, but it was useless. I made a living, but now I've found my way. I want to serve you, the prophet of God. I don't want a servant, Iscariot, but I myself have come to serve. I promise that I will be such a good follower. And you'll never regret it. Uh, will you accept me? What good luck. I can be your treasurer if you like. I am familiar with keeping books, you understand. Even if nothing more. With your permission, I could go to town to my friend's shop and buy vegetables, dates, figs, and olives for all of you with this small amount of money. I could buy fish also with your permission. But Master, why do you allow anyone into our circle? Whoever enters our circle It is certainly God's will that he has come to us. Know that. It is not you who has chosen me, but I who have chosen you.
Andrew. Give this bread to Judas. Secluded friend. What is it? Here. I've brought you some food. Thank you. You should thank our master. He kept your share of bread. If Peter and I were to decide, you'd sleep hungry tonight, brother. Gary, it's going. No. He's always vanishing. I can't figure him out. Yes. I don't know where he vanishes to either. Good night. Andrew. I have a question. A question? You said you were once John's disciple. How much did John resemble Jesus? That's a difficult question, brother. I hope that you are not expecting a philosophical answer to your question. Because I'm afraid I'm not a literate man. Will you answer or not? All right, provided that you eat your dinner. <laughs> Let me see. If I'm not mistaken, I think I saw the martyred John near the River Jordan four years ago. I had recently left a Sing convent. I was looking for a complete human, a divine teacher, an honest servant. Do you know what I'm saying? That day, John was preaching to the people by the brook near Jericho. He had a strange, attractive quality. You could see God's glory in his impressive face. Repent and return to God, or you shall be caught in hell by God's almighty punishment. The tree that bears no good fruit will be felled and thrown into the fire. You must try to be righteous people because the hereafter belongs only to the pious and to the righteous. O oh, prophet, son of Zechariah, what do we do? Never extort money from people by force or trick. Do not slander anyone. Be contented with your limits. If you have two shirts, Give one to the person who has none. And do the same if you have more food than you need. If you do not do these things, then you will certainly be deprived of the blessing of God. Therefore, the infidels shall overcome you more than before. And this way, all will suffer together. 
Repent and return to the God Almighty. John didn't cut his hair. He didn't have cooked food or decent drinks. He attacked the wealthy people, especially Herod. The hard principles he ordered, especially the baptisms he carried out, on anyone who accepted his invitation. All this gave me the impression that he was a pious man of a Jewish sect, such as the Sons of Light. Have you heard of it? Hmm. Is it true that the members of this sect are banned from eating food that hasn't been prepared by the use of a special ritual? Yes, it is true. They made the vow according to an ancient pledge. Then it stands to reason the people who leave these convents after such fasting would die of malnutrition. That is so. They only use such things available to them that have been prepared inside the convent, plus some of the natural foods available such as the root of plants and locusts and honey made by wild bees not farmed by people. So John's lifestyle made me think he was the preacher of such a sect. But later I learned that I was mistaken. How so? Unlike any of the other preachers I'd known from the Jewish sect, he never invited people to him. He just always shouted, open the path for the messenger of God, for he is coming, the messenger whose sandals I'm not even worthy of lacing. Oh, people, prepare yourself for the coming of the Messiah. I baptize with water any sinner who will repent. Here, water will wash away your sins. But someone else is coming, someone superior to me. He will baptize you by the Holy Spirit. He is the Messiah. Then one day, he was going to the river. They arrested him. You were there? Yes. And they arrested him on charge of insulting Herod. He turned to me and said, Today, God's promise was realized. My mission has come to an end. Andrew? 
Then what happened? Why are you quiet? Tell me, please. What else is there to tell? I believe John was one of the kindest ever servants of God. He couldn't endure the inferiority of the nature of men. And he appeared bitter-tongued and uncompromising. But I found out later, much later, that when our master started his invitation, after John's martyrdom, he began to modify the strict ways of his cousin. And the wrathful God of John became a benevolent God in our master's word. The God people needed. A God of beneficence, who shall one day send his messenger a messenger not only to save the people of Judea and Galilee, but a messenger who will save all mankind. At last. Andrew, what? Two years ago, the incident John promised came to pass.